Good morning. Please get your authorized version of the scriptures and please read with me today. Read with me in the scriptures that we will be considering this day. Please read with me. Follow me along in the scriptures, word for word, verse by verse. Be a Berean. Search the scriptures daily, whether these things be so. Read with me, because sometimes, like I tell you often, always tell you, the mouth will go quicker than the brain. Okay? Might skip a groove. So read along with me. Come on. Read the scriptures with me today. Follow me along. Please. Don't just sit there passively. Get the scriptures. Get the scriptures. You know, <laughs> if you, uh, if you do any kind of, any kind of work for the Lord, you can wake up uh, on a day with a certain idea of, okay, this is what I'm going to do today. And then the Lord's like, no, you do what I tell you to do. Okay? And, and that's another thing, too. Remember, our, our Lord doesn't force you to do anything. You've got to make the right choices. But this morning, the Lord is like, I want you to speak about what you thought you were going to speak about today. I want you to speak about this. And the Lord had guided me today, th this morning, into a totally different direction than what I had thought I was going to speak to you about today. So, Mark chapter 4 is where we're going to begin. Our main body of what we're going to be looking at, our main text today, is going to be Acts 14, verses 8 on verse 19. But I'm going to start out in Mark, verses 14 on to verse 20, okay? Remember, this is, <laughs> this is before the death, burial, and resurrection, okay? The law was still binding, okay? There's a lot of what is before the death, burial, and resurrection is for our instruction and in righteousness, doctrinally, Okay, the things under the law, the majority of the doctrine does not apply for us today. Okay, you must rightly divide the word of truth, my friend. Or else you will become as one of these heretics. And if you do not rightly divide the word of truth, God is ashamed of you. And praise the Lord. So, because... Most people who do not rightly divide the word of truth just make the scriptures an absolute mess trying to make everything blend together and it just doesn't work. But this is our instruction in righteousness. Check out the, the community thing. What's the difference between doctrine and instruction in righteousness? We cover that in a video but already. So, But enough of that. As long as you... Don't rightly divide the word of truth, son. Your walk with the Lord is going to be a mess. And you're going to fall for anyone who sounds as if they are pious. You poor, foolish man. I pity you. I pity any of you who know who know about rightly dividing but willfully choose otherwise that's stupid and that's kind of what we're going to be addressing in a way today Mark chapter 4 verses 14 on verse 20 the sower soweth the word and these are they by the wayside, where the word is sown. But when they have heard, Satan cometh immediately, and taketh away the word that was sown in their hearts. Warning some people about devils, and warning them, it's like, dude, you're, you're not rightly dividing the word of truth. Okay? <laughs> All right? See, if people would rightly divide the word of truth, it would solve so much problems. Okay? 
But Satan has worked tirelessly for literally centuries to get people away from what the scripture says about rightly dividing the word of truth. And when we saints of the church of the living God come across some people who are struggling who are with stuff like that and, uh, you know, who aren't rightly dividing and we give them truth through scripture. <laughs> These are they by the wayside where the word is sown. But when they have heard, Satan cometh immediately and taketh away the word that was sown in their hearts. Yea, hath God said. And these are they likewise which are sown on stony ground, who when they have heard the word, immediately receive it with gladness. Wow, that's a, yeah, yeah. And have no root in themselves. And so endure but for a time. Afterward, when affliction or persecution ariseth, for the word's sake, immediately, they are offended. Why? Why isn't the Sermon on the Mount doctrine for us today? That the Sermon on the Mount, people, that, that we've talked about that. Okay, beautiful instruction and in righteousness for us today. Yes, you don't know the difference. Like I said, we've talked about it before. Okay, doctrinally. The Sermon on the Mount, doctrine which pertains to salvation, man being right with God, doctrinally, it's all works. It's all works. Okay? There's no death, burial, and resurrection in the Sermon on the Mount. Okay? It's all works. The kingdom of heaven is all works. We have talked about this tirelessly, okay? All right? Okay? So, when you tell people the truth for a little while, for a little while, uh, some of them will be like, yeah, but then what? And have no root in themselves, and so endure but for a time. Afterward, when affliction or persecution arises for the word's sake, immediately they are offended. And these are they which are sown among thorns, such as hear the word, and the cares of this world, and the deceitfulness of riches, and the lust of other things, entering in, choke the word, and it becometh unfruitful. A lot of people like to make the argument, well, it says unfruitful, meaning, you know, that, you know, well... This is talking about safe people, blah, blah, blah. Okay? If the word sown in you bears no fruit, going nowhere, what does that mean? I'll let you figure that one out. And these are they which are sown on good ground, and there is none good but God, such as hear the word and receive it, and bring forth fruit, some thirtyfold, some sixty, and some an hundred. found that very meat, what the Lord did, excuse me, because um, Acts chapter 14, I want you to remember this as we're going through this, okay, because this is what, this is what the, um, this is what the Lord put upon me as he guided me into this, scarce, and with these sayings, scarce restrained they the people that they had not done sacrifice unto them. And with these sayings scarce restrained they the people that they had not done sacrifice unto them. Hmm. Acts chapter 14. One, one moment please. Alright, sorry about that. If you just saw a blip. Okay. Acts chapter 14. We are going to be reading verses 8 on to verse 19. We're going to have ourselves a little bit expository here. Just a little bit, okay? But, um, yeah. 
Anyway, Acts chapter 14, verses 8 on to verse 19, beginning at verse 8. And there sat a certain man at Lystra, impotent in his feet, being a cripple from his mother's womb, who never had walked. The same heard Paul speak, who steadfastly behold him, beholding him, and perceiving that he had faith to be healed, said with a loud voice, Stand upright on thy feet. And he leapt and walked. And when the people saw what Paul had done, now we're going to be concentrating here on verses 11 on to verse 13. And when the people saw what Paul had done, they lifted up their voices, saying in the speech of Lyconia, the gods, little g, are come down to us in the likeness of men. And they called Barnabas Jupiter and Paul Mercurus, because he was the chief priest, uh, speaker. Then the priest of Jupiter, which was before their city, brought oxen and garlands unto the gate and would have done sacrifice with the people. Look here, let's go to Acts chapter 8. This immediately brings to mind what? Okay? This immediately brings to mind what? Acts chapter 8 verses 9 on to verse 11. This is important because Acts chapter 7, Jewry as a whole, not the individual, but Jewry in its entirety, rejected the gospel. Okay? That doesn't mean that individual Hebrews can be saved today, not at all. Okay, you got to understand about the first seven uh, chapters in the book of Acts. It was, is this dispensation, which is by grace through faith. But as the kingdom of heaven was primarily specifically offered unto the Jewish people after the death, burial, and resurrection, the gospel was first to the Jew first and also to the Greek, it's Gentile. Okay, it was first, the gospel was first specifically and exclusively offered onto the Hebraic Jewish people. Okay? All right? A lot of heretics want to tell you that there were Gentiles in Acts chapter... There were no Gentiles there! Okay? There were none. All right? Okay? There were none. Yes, in the book of Acts, Greeks and were uh, mingling themselves among them, but, but the gospel was specifically at the first offered unto the Hebraic Jewish people. It was this dispensation, which is by grace through faith. Okay? Okay? you got to understand that. And that's where one of the many shades of hyper-dispensationalism comes in, where they want to tell you that there are two bodies, that there is one uh, of the Hebraic body and one of the Gentile body, the Jewish body. Jewish body and the Gentile body. That's not true. There's one gospel today. Okay? which was revealed unto Paul, okay? All right? Don't get, don't get deceived by these devils who say that there are two bodies. That's nonsense, okay? That's nonsense. It was, this, this, it was and is this dispensation. But see, Acts chapter 7, Jewry, Jewry in its entirety, with the stoning of Stephen, rejected the gospel, the kingdom of God, the spiritual as it were. And then in Acts chapter 8, you see first Gentile, who happened to be a Hamite. Okay? But, Acts chapter 8, verses 9 unto verse 11. Okay? But there was a certain man called Shimon, which before time in the same city used sorcery and bewitched the people of Samaria giving out that himself was some great one, to whom they all gave heed, from the least to the greatest, saying, This man is the great power of God. And to him they had regard, because that of a long time he had bewitched them with sorceries. And again, when you look here in Acts chapter 14, about the priest of Jupiter, okay, they brought what? They brought what? Oxen and garlands onto the gates, and would have done sacrifice with the people. Paul and Barnabas were demonstrating, offering, showing them the truth, speaking the truth unto these people about Jesus Christ, 
turning from the idols and whatnot, okay? But, but the people were bewitched still, okay? They were given, uh, they were given the truth, but they were still bewitched. Uh, at, and I know, yeah, I know the word bewitched does not appear in the text in Acts chapter 14, but what was going on? Okay, go to Galatians chapter 3, Galatians chapter 3, okay, and see, there were Hebrews, Jews, amongst those people, because the Jews require a sign, and the Greeks seek after wisdom, okay? There were Jews present, because the sign gifts were for the Jews, okay? But, Galatians chapter 3, verses 1 on to verse 5. Oh, foolish, foolish. To be foolish is to behave, act, speak, do, as if you say in your heart there is no God. Okay? O oh, foolish Galatians, who hath bewitched you? Yea, hath God said that ye should not obey the truth, before whose eyes Jesus Christ hath been evidently set forth, crucified among you. And with this, of course, you look at chapter 2, verse 20 and 21. I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not frustrate the grace of God, for if righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. Okay? And of course, Romans 12, 1 and 2, be not conformed to this world, you know that. Okay? So, in verse 1, Paul was speaking the truth and also living the truth. Okay? All right? You have to remember that. Okay? And also remember, Paul, by his own admission, was a sinner who was chief. Called himself an old wretched man that he was, Romans chapter 7. Okay? You know, again, we saints, we have moments where we act, behave, think, even speak as a hypocrite, okay? Even Paul had moments like that. Just keep that in mind, okay? All right? So when he says, before whose eyes Jesus Christ hath been evidently set forth, crucified among you, okay? He was living what he was preaching, okay? Okay? This only what I learn of you. Receive ye the capitalist spirit, the Lord himself, by the works of the law, or by the hearing of faith. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Okay? Are ye so foolish, having begun in the capitalist spirit, the Lord himself, are ye now made perfect by the flesh? Oh yeah, boy. Oh yeah, and there we go. They hear the word for a little while, but then when... Uh, persecution for the word or the cares of this life then they resort to fleshly means they go back to Egypt probably because they never were truly taken out of Egypt and redeemed in the first place because I'm telling you when the Lord breaks you he breaks you thoroughly when you reach that point where there is nothing you can do but hope and pray, it's like, Lord, save me! And see, saved people understand that. People who have never been truly broken. Truly broken. Because there are so many people who can get broken and come to the foot of the cross. But they want to see a Christ who is still a Christ that is still on the cross. Hence, not finished! And hence, they go to do things in the flesh, which we have covered that topic on numerous occasions. Okay. Verse 4, have ye suffered so many things in vain, if it be yet in vain? He therefore that ministereth to you the capitalist spirit, and worketh miracles among you, doeth he it by the works of the law, or by the hearing of faith? Okay? And go back to Acts chapter 14, verses 11 and 13, on to 13 again. And when the people saw what Paul had done, they lifted up their voices, saying in the speech of Lyconia, 
the gods are come down to us in the likeness of men. And they called Barnabas Jupiter and Paul Mercurus, because he was the chief speaker. Then the priest of Jupiter, yea, hath God said, Satan comes along with his, his people, you know, okay, which was before their city brought oxen and garlands unto the gates, would have done sacrifice with the people. Let's pick this up, verses 14 now on to verse 18. Which when the apostles Barnabas and Paul heard of, they rent their clothes and ran in among the people, crying out. They're like, oh, oy vey. Whoa, dude, stop, stop. Whoa, whoa, stop. What are you doing? What are you doing? Okay. And also keep in mind about Acts chapter 21. When Paul knowingly, in order to appease James, okay, he compromised and knowingly did that which he knew was contrary salvifically, doctrinally, today. When he went into the temple and was about to offer a sacrifice, and then the Lord's like, don't, don't get in there. He ain't offering a sacrifice. It's finished. I already took care of that. A moment when Paul was compromised, being a hypocrite. <laughs> you know, when people are always hypocrite, 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 um, like Paul was a hypocrite at some times. Not entirely, but he had a It's documented in Scripture. Everybody basically knows about Paul. David, we talked about that. Okay? All right? But they're like, whoa, <laughs> dude, stop, don't do this, okay? Verse 15, and saying, sirs, <laughs> oy vey, why do ye these things? We also are men of like passions with, with you, and preach unto you that ye should turn from these vanities unto the living God which made heaven and earth and the sea and all things that are therein. About this, let's look at this first now. And saying, sirs, why do ye these things? We also are men of like passions with you. Okay, now let's irritate some people here because there are some people who are deceived, who are simple-minded and acting stupid, willfully choosing to ignore truth. That's stupid. Okay? Acts chapter 10. Excuse me. Acts chapter 10. Okay? There are some people out there, even though they wouldn't say these, uh, they look at some of these preachers and teachers, they put them up on a pedestal and nearly worship them. Of course, they would never um, admit that, of course. But what happens? They make idols out of these people. Okay? And that is something that those who are called to a position such as this, they got to watch out for, okay? You see that demonstrated in certain preachers. I'm not even going to go in that direction here on YouTube and also in the church buildings, okay? Um, I will name one name. That Danny Castle guy, some of you who know who Danny Castle is, okay? Very entertaining preacher, okay? Yes, he is. Yeah, very amusing, okay? Okay? He, he, they get caught up in the moment. They get caught up with their own aura, if you will. Okay? They start thinking more highly of themselves than they ought. Okay? But in Acts chapter 10, Acts chapter 1 verse, verse 26. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. Let's, let's, um, let's read verses 25 and 26 about Cornelius. Okay? And as Peter was coming in, Cornelius met him and fell down at his feet and worshipped him. Catholics call the first pope. Peter, the first pope, really? Okay? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm writing these down, so don't forget, okay? And what did the first pope Catholic do? Give him a ring? Shut up. The Lord rebuke you. But Peter took him up, saying, Stand up. I myself also am a man. In the book of Isaiah, the Lord's like, why should you fear man who will die? 
Why should you reverence a man hmm, who's going to die just like you? Okay, why should you do that? And see, people are like, well, what about Jesus? Jesus is God the Father. Okay? Remember, dear friend, flesh is not God. Okay? You have to remember that. God was manifest in the flesh. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh, yes, but flesh is not God. Do remember that. Okay? What did Peter do? I'm like, stand up. I'm also a man. Okay? All right? And also James chapter 5. James chapter 5. James chapter 5. Verses 10 and 11. If you're there, already read it. <laughs> I'm getting there. <laughs> James chapter 5, verses 10 and 11. Take, my brethren, the prophets, who have spoken in the name of the Lord, for an example of suffering, affliction, and of patience. Behold, we count them happy which endure. Ye have heard of the patience of Job, and have seen the end of the Lord, that the Lord is very pitiful and of tender mercy. Look at verse nine. Uh, look at verse uh, seventeen. Elias, Elijah, was a man subject to like passions as we are, and he prayed earnestly that it might not rain, and it rained not on the earth by the space of three years and six months. Okay. Remember Elijah. He did mighty works, but that yet he ran at the threats of a woman. Okay? Okay, and Revelation chapter 22. Revelation chapter 22. One verse. Revelation chapter 22, verse 9. Oh, of, let's read verse 8 and 9. And I, John, saw these things and heard them. And when I heard and seen, I fell down to worship before the feet of the angel which shewed me these things. Then saith he unto me, See thou do it not, for I am thy fellow servant, and of thy brethren the prophets, and of them which keep the sayings of this book, worship God. Okay? Now the Jehos will say that, you know, will bring up, well, Jesus allowed people to worship him, because he's got the Father. Okay? God was manifest in the flesh. God shall, will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. Okay, We've covered this before. There are people out there who just don't want to hear the truth. Okay, Because why? 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 They depend on themselves. They depend on this. Okay? That's why. That's why. Okay? That's why. But, Acts chapter 14, verse 15, okay, again, and saying, Sirs, why do ye these things? We also are men of like passions with you, and preach unto you, that ye should turn from these vanities unto the living God. And then you on your own time, go ahead and read verse uh, chapter 13 in Acts, verses 26 on to verse 41, okay? All right? Paul is uh, echoing in a way the type of thing that Stephen did, which Paul witnessed, okay? He's doing it in the same kind of way, you know, giving a rundown, just like Stephen did before they killed him, okay? All right, but look at verse, uh, Acts chapter 17, excuse me, Acts chapter 17, verses 24 on to verse 32. God that made the world and all things therein, seeing that he is Lord of heaven and earth, dwelleth not in temples made with hands, neither is worship with men's hands, as though he needed anything, seeing he giveth to all life and breath and all things. And we covered this in the previous, one of the previous videos. Okay? And hath made of one blood all nations of men for to dwell on all the face of the earth, and hath determined the times before appointed and the bonds of their habitation that they should seek the Lord, if haply they might feel after him and find him, though he be not far from every one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being, as certain also of your own poets have said, for we are also his offspring. And we covered this in one of the videos earlier this week, okay? For as much then as we are the offspring of God, 
We ought not to think that the Godhead is like unto gold or silver or stone, graven by art and man's device. And see, when you look at Acts chapter 14 there, man's device. Offering garlands and oxen. Okay? All right? And the times of this ignorance God winked at. But now commandeth all men everywhere to repent. Why? Because he hath appointed a day in the which he will judge the world in righteousness by that man whom he hath ordained, whereof he hath given assurance unto all men, and that he hath raised him from the dead. Okay? And when they heard of the resurrection of the dead, some mocked, and others said, We will hear thee again of this matter. <laughs> And when you get right down to it, with a lot of these Christians, when you get right down to it, it's right there. And when they heard of the resurrection of the dead, some mocked. Most of these Christians don't believe that Jesus Christ was raised from the dead. Oh, with their lips they say, well, I'm a Christian, of course, they, of course I believe that. Talk with them. I'm saved just because I believe. That's your own doing. Where is by grace through faith in that. It's not there. So Paul departed from among them, albeit certain men clave unto him, and believed, among the which was Dionysus and Aeropagite, and a woman named Damaris, and others with them. Okay? Okay? And also, too, let's read verse 15 again in Acts 14, and saying, Sirs, why do ye these things? We also are men of like passions with you, and preach unto you that ye should turn from these vanities unto the living God, which made heaven and earth, and the sea and all things that are therein. And like I said, you read verse uh, chapter 13, verses 26 on verse 41. Okay, Paul gives that rundown. Okay, this is what he was preaching. Okay, and notice this is Acts 14. What's after 14? 15. Okay, where uh, were Hebrews, Jews, saying, you got to keep the law. Okay, this is right before the Jerusalem conference. Okay, and after which, where they determine that keeping the law, where, you know, obviously, you don't keep the law to be saved today, stay saved or be right with God. Okay, even easy believers and heretics get that one right. Okay. All right, but you also have to remember Acts, uh, excuse me, Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 3, verses 1 on verse 7. Okay, Ephesians chapter 3, verses 1 on verse 7. For this cause I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ, for you Gentiles, if ye have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God which is given me to you, word, okay, the, re the revelation of the gospel of today, okay. How that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery, as I wrote afore in few words, whereby when ye read, ye may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ, which in other ages, other dispensations, this nonsense that they were looking forward to the cross in Genesis, under the law, Okay, there are types of the cross, of course, in the Exodus, and also the redemption of the purchased possession in the Ark, uh, Noah and the Ark, yes. But they were not looking forward to the cross un uh, under the law and stuff like that. It wasn't revealed until Paul, okay? It says so right here. Which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men, as it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the capital S Spirit, the Lord himself which indwells permanently in the saved, born-again, converted believer. Okay? What's this mystery? In a mystery Babylon, I can tell you that, that the Gentiles should be fellow heirs and of the same body and partakers of his promise in Christ by the gospel, whereof I was made a minister according to the gift of the grace of God given unto me by the effectual working of his power. And of course... Of course, of course, you got to read um, Romans chapter one, right? Romans one, 
<laughs> oh, verses 16 and 17. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first, and also to the Greek. Greek is a Gentile. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith and what God was going to do under the Old Testament. To faith, it is finished. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. That's the difference between the two faiths there. Before the death, burial, and resurrection, your faith was going to be in what? In what God was going to do. Okay? Today, your faith is in the finished work of the cross, the death, burial, and resurrection, and the blood he shed. Okay? All right? All right? But what has happened today, dear people? What has happened today? Satan sends his priests of Juniper, of Jupiter, excuse me, okay? Bringing out visual things like oxen and garlands to a people who were, who were being demonstrated of the truth, being warned of the, told the truth. Hmm. But yet, but yet, okay, Colossians chapter 2, Colossians chapter 2, Colossians chapter 2, and see, this is the danger of making, putting people on pedestals, okay, and this is why we, any of us, of the saints, who are in any of a position such as this, we need to be careful. We really need to be careful that you don't believe your own hype. As there are some out there who do. Okay? Colossians chapter 2 verses 18 and 19. Let no man beguile you of your reward in a voluntary humility and worshiping of angels. Intruding into those things which he hath not seen, vainly puffed up by his fleshly mind, a wisdom that is what? First what? Earthly, sensual, devilish, okay? And not holding the capital H head, our Lord Jesus Christ, from which all the body by joints and bands having nourishment, ministered and knit together, increaseth with the increase of God. Okay? Okay? Now let's go back to Acts chapter 14, picking up at verse 16. And who, who in times past suffered all nations to walk in their own ways? We already covered that in Acts chapter 17. Okay? Nevertheless, he left not himself without witness, in that he did good, and gave us rain from heaven and fruitful seasons, filling our hearts with food and gladness. And with these sayings, Scarce restrained they the people that they had not done sacrifice unto them. Scarce. Barely stopped the people from doing that. But see, there was a hang up in there with these people, wasn't there? Wasn't there? Well, what was it? In Jeremiah chapter 44, Jeremiah chapter 44. Jeremiah chapter 44, just a couple of verses. After Nebuchadnezzar came and whooped the snot out of Jerusalem, okay, the Jewish people were told to just stay after, you know, there were a lot taken captive and whatnot, but uh, Nebuchadnezzar left some there in Jerusalem under the care of Gedaliah. Okay, Gedaliah gets killed by Ishmael. Okay, not uh, not uh, Arab Ishmael, but Ish another Ishmael. Okay, and they get scared, and they want to go back to Egypt. They go to Jeremiah. It's like pray to the Lord for us, and whatever the Lord says through you to tell us, we're going to do it. And Jeremiah goes to the Lord, and the Lord's like, tell them to stay put in Jerusalem and not to go to Egypt. But guess what? They ain't going to hear you. And that's exactly what happened. While they protested, no matter what the Lord says for you to tell us, we're going to do it. And Jeremiah says, don't go to Egypt. The Lord, through Jeremiah, says, excuse me, don't go to Egypt. 
Uh, and of course uh, Jeremiah 43 verses uh, 1 on verse 3 and it came to pass that when Jeremiah had made an end of speaking unto all the people all the words of the Lord their God for which the Lord their God had sent him to them even all these words then spake Azariah the son of Hoshiah and Johanan the son of Kera and all the proud saying unto Jeremiah, Thou speakest falsely. The Lord our God hath not sent thee to say, Go not into Egypt to sojourn there. But Baruch, the son of Neriah, setteth thee on against us, for to deliver us into the hand of the Chaldeans, that they might put us to death and carry us away captives into Babylon. How many of you, brethren, have encountered that? Where you reach out to someone, where you talk to someone, you give them truth, and it's like, that's not true. But you're, you you want to you want to turn me against these things? Oh, look at that. what? What do you mean talking about rightly dividing the word of truth? Huh? What do you mean not being conformed to this world? Huh? <laughs> what do you mean being broken, contrite, and in fear of the Lord, calling upon His name? What do you mean? Those are all works. I just believe. What do you mean? I'm not elect. What do you mean the Sermon on the Mount isn't doctrine for us today? What do you mean? You try to warn people. But what, are that, what happens? Jeremiah 44, verse 16 on to verse 18. In their hearts. They, you know, remember, Paul and Barnabas are like, well, dude, stop, stop. And they barely, scarcely, they scarce restrained the people. Okay? Barely. Barely. But what was in these people's hearts? As for the word that thou hast spoken unto us in the name of the Lord, we will not hearken unto thee. But we will certainly do whatsoever thing goeth forth out of our own mouth, to burn incense unto the Queen of Heaven, the Roman Catholic Mary, and to pour out our drink offerings onto her, the wine that they say becomes blood. As we have done, and our fathers, our kings and our princes in the cities of Judah, and in the streets of Jerusalem, for then had we plenty of victuals, and were well, and saw no evil. But since we left off to burn incense to the Queen of Heaven, and to pour out our drink offerings onto her, we have wanted all things and have been consumed by the sword and by the famine. And of course, they made cakes unto the Queen of Heaven. You know, the little wafer cookie, okay? All right? And considering what these people went through, the horror of Nebuchadnezzar slaughtering and bringing captive and leaving these people there, and God says, stay there, don't go to Egypt, and they go anyway. Then you might be thinking, well, why even witness? Accountability. Most of the witnessing that you and I, dear saints, are going to be doing nowadays, it seems, is accountability. That people, you know, let God be true, but every man a liar, okay? So people will not be able to say, I have not heard the truth. Okay? John chapter 8. John chapter 8, and this one right here, we could, we could go off for hours on this, but we're not going to. John chapter 8, verses 30, on to verse 32, okay? As he spake these words, many believed on him. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, Okay? And remember, too, later on our Lord would say, you came to me just because you saw the miracle, because you were fed, not because you saw the miracle of the loaves, you know? All right? You see in me just a meal ticket. You don't recognize that I am God the Father, the Mashiach, your promised king. Okay? See, many people see Jesus as just a means to an end. Well, isn't he? Yes. Without him and his salvation, his gift, 
Without that, you're going to hell. But see, we saints, that's not why we love the Lord. That's not why we serve Him. Okay? If you're going to the Lord Jesus, serving Him just for the worldly things that accompany it, no. We love Him because He first loved us. Okay? And the devils make, you know, twist what love is and make it something grotesque and perverse. Love is truth. Jesus Christ, He is the way, the truth, and the life. Okay? And truth is love. Okay? Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, If ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. A lot of these guys believed on him. And look at their first reaction. Verse 33. They answered him, We be Abraham's seed. And we're never in bondage to any man. How sayest thou that? How sayest thou ye shall be made free? Sound familiar? You warn someone, it's like, dude, you're falling for a lie. You're falling for heresy. What do you mean? Okay? Uh, look at verse 39. They answered and said unto him, Abraham is our father. Oh, but they believed on the Lord. But see, they were self-righteous. They answered and said unto him, Abraham is our father. Jesus saith unto them, If ye were Abraham's children, ye would do the works of Abraham. Okay? Remember, this was still under the law. Okay? And then verse 41, uh, let's keep reading. But now ye seek to kill me, a man that hath told you the truth, which I have heard of God. This did not Abraham. Ye do the deeds of your father. They said unto him, We be not born of fornication. We have one father, even God. And of course, in verse 44, uh, 44, he's like, Ye are of your father the devil, and the lust of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. But yet, these people believed on him. But yet the Lord himself said, wait, wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. You, you, you believe it on me, right? All right? Uh, okay. Okay. <laughs> look at their responses. And look at how the Lord responds to them. You have your father the devil. The same that believe on him. Okay. And then look at verse 48. Then answered the Jews and said unto him, Say we not well that thou art a Samaritan and hast a devil? You know, if they hate the Lord, they're going to hate us, his saints. Okay? Especially when you tell them the truth. But they believe, right? Right? <laughs> they believed on him. But yet, <laughs> we're... <clears throat> Abraham's seed. Okay. We were never in bondage. Abraham is our father. We even have one father, even God. Look <laughs> verse 48. They call him a devil. When the Lord's like, <laughs> you, 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 what do you think you're fooling? You, you are your father the devil. The Lord called them out. The Lord called them out for being fake. And then, okay, these same Jews that believed on him. Who was like, we were never, we're Abraham's seed. Abraham is our father. We have one father, even God. You're a devil. But they believed on him, right? It's not funny, but can you see this? <laughs> 52 and 53. Then said the Jews unto him, now we know that thou hast the devil. But they believed on him. Abraham is dead in the prophets. And thou sayest, if a man keep my saying, he shall never taste of death. And see, when you count Christ 
as a lesser God in a three-person trinity. But you believe on him, right? But yet, he's not the Father. You got yourself a predicament there, friend. And right here. Art thou greater than our father Abraham, which is dead? And the prophets are dead. Who makest thou thyself? Verse 30. As he spake these words, many believed on him. Verse 57 and on to verse 59 here. Then said the Jews unto him, Thou art not yet fifty years old, and hast thou seen Abraham? And here our Lord says he is the Father. Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, before Abraham was, I am. And these same Jews, these same people, who believed on him, then took they up stones to cast at him. Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple, going through the midst of them, and so passed by. Acts 22. Acts 22. Again. See, these people have their own little pet doctrines that they are not willing to depart from because it glorifies themselves. Hence, not truly broken. And we as saints, whether they will hear or whether they will forbear, but they will know the truth. They will at least have heard it, excuse me. Whether they have ears to hear, don't know. But Acts chapter 22, verses 17 on to verse 24. When Paul, you know, after the Lord's like, Okay, that's it. You're about to do what I, what I have already taken care of. There's no more offerings. No, no, no. Get, come on. Okay. That, that will be for, uh, for you in the description box. Okay. But anyway, picking up at verse 17 on to verse 24. When Paul was giving his defense unto the people. And it came to pass out when I was come again to Jerusalem, even while I prayed in the temple, I was in a trance, and saw him saying unto me, Make haste, and get thee quickly out of Jerusalem, for they will not receive thy testimony concerning me. And I said, Lord, they know that I imprisoned and beat in every synagogue them that believed on thee. And when the blood of thy martyr Stephen was shed, I also was standing by and consenting unto his death and kept the remnant of them that slew him. See, when you are willfully choosing to be ignorant, stupid, and going along with heresy, defending heretics, and not willing to consider the truth, you're making yourself one of them. You will share in their judgment. Okay? You are consenting unto a thief, and the thief cometh not but to kill and to destroy. And he said unto me, Depart, for I will send thee far hence unto the Gentiles. And they gave him audience unto this word, going to the Gentiles, which we already covered, it was part of the mystery of bringing us Gentiles into the tree of the Jew. And they gave him audience unto this word, and then lifted up their voices and said, Away with such a fellow from the earth, for it is not fit that he should live. You, you see, the Lord will put his finger on that one thing, that one thing you lack. That's what our Lord does. Okay? It's like, we saw that in uh, John. He's like, whoa, whoa. You believe on me, huh? And those same that believed on him towards the end of that chapter were ready to stone him. I'm saved because I just believe. 
I bet you are, yeah. And as they cried out and cast off their clothes and threw dust into the air, made a big commotion. The chief captain commanded him to be brought into the castle and bade that he should be examined by scourging, that he might know wherefore they cried so against him. Acts chapter 14, verse 18 again. And with these sayings, scarce restrain, restrained they the people, that they had not done sacrifice unto them. In Matthew chapter 15, brother, in Matthew chapter 15, Matthew chapter 15, just one verse, verse 14. When you come to people who you give the truth unto, they don't want to hear it, but turn and rend you, casting your pearls before swine. The Lord used you as a means to make one accountable. It's like, hey, dude, you know, you need to wake up. But they don't want to hear. It. Let them alone. They are blind leaders of the blind. And if the blind lead the blind, both shall fall into the ditch. And also Matthew chapter 23, because a lot of these people who, the, uh, some of these people will make idols of the people that they're listening to. They would never admit that, but the way they behave. There are certain people out there who, um, when they would be kicked by others, that those people who follow them would come to their defense. There's nothing wrong with defending a friend, okay? If they are actually a friend, a fellow saint, sure. But the, it's this thing of doing the dirty work, okay? Doing the dirty work thereof. You've got to watch out for this. Matthew chapter 23. Oh, excuse me. Excuse me. Getting a little ahead of ourselves. Getting a little ahead. Uh, Matthew chapter 13. Excuse me. Not yet on Matthew 23. Uh, Matthew chapter 13, verses 9 on to verse 15. Matthew chapter 13, verses 9 on to verse 15. Who hath ears to hear? Excuse me. Who hath ears to hear? Let him hear. And the disciples came and said unto him, Why speakest thou unto them in parables? He answered and said unto them, Because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. But to them it is not given. For whosoever hath to him shall be given, and he shall have more abundance. But whosoever hath not, from him shall be taken, even taken away even that he hath. Now, kingdom of heaven, remember, is always the physical, literal kingdom that is in Jerusalem. This is instruction in righteousness. Okay? Therefore speak I to them in parables, because they seeing see not, and hearing they hear not, neither do they understand. And in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah, Isaiah which saith, By hearing ye shall hear, and shall not understand, and seeing ye shall see, and not perceive. Okay, and what are we reading to on this? Verse 15. For this people's heart is wax gross, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes have they, have they closed. Hmm. Lest at any time they should see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and should understand with their heart, and should be converted, and I should heal them. Their eyes have they close. And of course, what is our Lord referencing? Isaiah chapter 6. I would love one day, but the Lord hasn't guided me onto such yet. I would love one day to do a expository video on Isaiah chapter 6. I would love to do that. I would love to do that. He has not led me on to doing that yet. But Isaiah chapter 6, verses 9 and 10. And he said, Go and tell its people, Hear ye indeed, but understand not, and see ye indeed, but perceive not. Make the heart of this people fat, and make their ears heavy, and shut their eyes, lest they should see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and understand with their heart, and convert, and be healed. Brethren, saints, as if you haven't figured this out already, 
majority of what you and I speak unto these people, especially to these Christians, that's what's happening today. Isn't it? It's like Ezekiel chapter 2. Ezekiel chapter 2. Verses 3 on to verse 8. Verses 3 on to verse 8. And he said unto me, Son of man, I send thee to the children of Israel, to a rebellious nation that hath rebelled against me. They and their fathers have transgressed against me, even unto this very day. The Lord says, you know, if I would have sent you unto such and such a people, they would have heard you. Okay? But I send you to the religious to warn them that they're being led astray by devils. Yeah. For they are impudent children and stiff-hearted. I do send thee unto them. And thou shalt say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God. And they, whether they will hear, or whether they will forbear, for they are a rebellious house, yet shall know that there hath been a prophet among them. What does that mean? Today, in this dispensation, a lot of us are just being used of our Lord as accountability. It happens so many times with rare people. It's like, like, with, what, like we looked at with Paul. You know, many, when they heard the resurrection, mocked, but some clave on him. It's like, what is this, man? Tell us more. Let, oh, wow. Well, others like, yeah, 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 the resurrection. I got to do something, Jack. Yeah. And thou, son of man, be not afraid of them. Neither be afraid of their words. Though briars and thorns be with thee. Remember what we started out with here? Okay. And thou dost dwell among scorpions. Yeah. Be not afraid of their words, nor be dismayed at their looks, though they be a rebellious house. And thou shalt speak my words unto them, whether they will hear or whether they will forbear, for they are most rebellious. But thou, son of man, hear what I say unto thee, be not thou rebellious like that rebellious house. Open thy mouth and eat that I give thee. And with, in verse 18 in Acts chapter 14, how they, and with these sayings, scarce restrained they the people that they had not done sacrifice unto them. Well, what happens? Verse 19. And there came thither certain Jews from Antioch and Iconium who persuaded the people and having stoned Paul drew him out of the city supposing he had been dead. Now a lot of people will come to this kind of stuff and will say, see the Jews, the Jews, the Jews. They are enemies of the gospel for our sake. But at the same time, they are supposed to see their God living in us. That's what Romans 11 is about. Okay? In the description box, okay, Romans 11, uh, the two-part video, Replacement Theology, okay? Okay? All right? But see, what is this talking about specifically? Because see, Romans chapter 9, Romans chapter 9, Okay? Romans chapter 9, verses 30 on to verse 33. Romans chapter 9, verses 30 on to verse 33. What shall we say then? That the Gentiles which follow not after righteousness have attained to righteousness, even the righteousness which is of faith. But Israel, which followed after the law of righteousness, hath not attained to the law of righteousness. Wherefore? Because they sought it not by faith but as it were the works of the law, for they stumbled at that stumbling stone. As it is written, Behold, I lay in Zion a stumbling stone and a rock of offense. Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. Thou believest there is one God, thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. See, this thing of being under the law today is disguised in so many ways. 
but ultimately what is it? Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God, uh, uh, chapter 10, verses 1 and verse 4. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. For I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth. And the easy believe is endeavor. Okay? Who skip over brokenness, contrition, and calling upon the name of the Lord out of fear of the Lord. Okay? What do they say? Backloading works unto salvation. Okay? All right? Calling on the name of the Lord, that's a work. Okay? Repentance is a work. Right? Prayer is a work. Right? Why? They want to establish their own righteousness. I'm saved because I just believe. You see this in Calvinists too. Well, I'm elect. I'm elect. You talk about chutzvah. And hence, the problem. What is that problem? For they being ignorant of God's righteousness. Ignorant, not knowing better. Also, also willfully not wanting to know better. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. That this is a faithful saying, worthy of all acceptation. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am chief. There is none good, no, not one. And see, that's what devils want to avoid. That they're not good. They come to a Christ who is on a cross, still, it's like, I, I, I'm, I'm not good, but I could do better. And they fall into traps such as conditional security and all kinds of nonsense. They haven't submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God, but they go to seek their own righteousness. Okay? Matthew chapter 23 now. Okay, Matthew chapter 23. Matthew chapter 23, verses 5 and on to verse 7. But all their works they do for to be seen of men, like bringing out uh, oxen and garlands. Okay? They make broad their phylacteries and enlarge the borders of their garments and love the upper room, uppermost rooms at feasts and the chief seats in the synagogues and greetings in the markets and to be called of men, Rabbi, Rabbi. And see, they want to establish their own righteousness. And, and you read in Acts chapter 13, verses 44 and 45, And the next Sabbath day came almost the whole city together to hear the word of God. But when the Jews saw the multitude, they were filled with envy, and spake against those things which were spoken by Paul, contradicting and blaspheming. Again, a lot of people want to single out the Jews. But what are they doing? These Jews didn't want to give up the law, which, was, which they accounted for their own self-righteousness. Ultimately, what is being said here, they didn't want to give up their self-righteousness, which they had of the law. And the Lord fulfilled the law. Okay? We've talked about this numerous times. Okay? And also in Acts chapter 14, verses 1 and verse 4. And it came to pass in Iconium that they went both together into the synagogue of the Jews, and so spake that a great multitude both of Jews and also of the Greeks believed. But the unbelieving Jews stirred up the Gentiles and made their minds evil affected against the brethren. Long time, therefore, both days speaking boldly in the Lord, which gave testimony unto the word of his grace, and granted signs and wonders to be done by their hands, because there were Jews present. But the multitude of the city was divided. And part held with the Jews, and part with the apostles. 
And see, that's what that's Satan's ultimate goal, to divide people. Okay? And look at what he's doing. See, amongst the body of Christ, the saints of the church of God, okay, this, rightly divided, is what brings us into fellowship. This, rightly divided, settles all the arguments. I tell you that amongst the saints, amongst the saints, where is there a division? And if division comes in, why, why is it? Every single time, flesh which ultimately these people are all about. So when you look in Acts chapter 14, verse 19, and there came thither certain Jews from Antioch and Iconium who persuaded the people, who, verse 18, and with these saying, saying scarce restrained they the people that they had not done sacrifice unto them. There were those there in Iconium, absolutely, who did come to the Lord, but it seems that the majority of them didn't want to give up that stuff, did they? And there came to their certain Jews from Antioch and Iconium, okay? Excuse me, uh, from Iconium. This here, they were in Derbe and Lystra, okay? Okay, excuse me for saying that, but but nonetheless, and there came thither certain Jews from Antioch and Iconium who persuaded the people and having stoned Paul. Same one who warned them of the truth, who told them of the truth, and it's like, dude, don't do this. They ended up stoning Paul. Look, I, I don't want to discourage you, brethren, but you've got to be aware that we are at a time. The redemption of the purchased possession can happen at any time. Okay? Divers are being hardened. Okay? People don't want to hear the truth. They want to go on in their own way. They are lovers of their own selves. We have to remember that. But not to be discouraged. And go back to Mark chapter 4. Picking up at verse 21 on to verse 29. And he said unto them, Is a candle brought to be put under a bushel or under a bed, and not to be set on a candlestick? For there is nothing hid which shall not be manifested. Neither was anything kept secret, but that it should, be, should come abroad. See, the Lord within us <laughs> comes out. Okay, We are to work out our salvation with fear and trembling. That doesn't mean that we're working to be saved. No. The Lord has put himself, who is our salvation, within us. Sealed. Once saved, always saved. We are to work out. Let the Lord out. He must increase, but I must decrease. Okay? That's what that's talking about. Okay? All right? We are to work out what the Lord has put in. Himself. Okay? And sometimes, brethren, this happened in Chicago, okay? When I was in Chicago recently, okay? They know. Why? Because the Lord within you, He gives testimony. Okay? You can be around people, you don't even have to say a word. You can just be looking at the cottage cheese, and people be like, it's like what, what? I got pit putty on, what's the problem? It's like in Acts chapter 19, dealing with the sons of Sceva, that unclean spirit said, Jesus I know and Paul I know, but who are ye? Verse 23, if any man have ears to hear, excuse me, let him hear. And he said unto them, Take heed what ye hear. With what measure ye meet, it shall be measured to you. And unto you that hear shall more be given. For he that hath to him shall be given. And he that hath not from him shall be taken even that which he hath. 
You warn someone, you plead with them, you give them truth, and they spit in your face. Imagine that person at the great white throne. I sent my servant warning you of these things. But no, you decided to choose a heretic. You decided to choose heresy. You decided to choose that which glorified yourself. And he said, so is the kingdom of God, as if a man cast seed into the ground, and should sleep, and rise night and day, and the seed should spring up, and grow up, he knoweth not how. And the earth bringeth forth, uh, forth fruit of herself, first the blade, then the ear, and after the full corn in the ear. But when the fruit is brought forth, immediately he putteth in the sickle, because the harvest is come. Scarce restrained they the people. And even those same people that they scarce restrained ended up stoning Paul. <laughs> You've been called to preach, huh? <laughs> oh. And those who have ears to hear, let them hear. Brethren, Again, I don't want to discourage you, okay? But I warn you, okay? I warn you. The closer we get to the redemption of the purchased possession, the worse it is becoming and the worse we are seeing, okay? Don't quit. Don't give up. Fight the good fight of faith until the Titanic has gone almost all the way down and the Lord's like okay come up hither fight the good fight brethren because remember all who will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution but evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse deceiving and being deceived Please be aware of these things, okay? Now, hold on one moment. I'd like to sing a hymn with you. What a friend we have in Jesus, all our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear. All because we do not carry Everything to God in prayer. Have we trials and temptations? Is there trouble anywhere? We should never be discouraged. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Can we find a friend so faithful who will all our sorrows share? Jesus knows our every weakness. Take it to the Lord in prayer. <laughs> are we weak and heavy laden? Cumbered with a load of care. Precious Savior, still our refuge. Take it to the Lord in prayer. 
do thy friends despise, forsake thee. Take it to the Lord in prayer. In his arms he'll take and shield thee. Thou wilt find a solace there. There, brother. I did it in the right order as well. <laughs> this was not the video that I thought I was going to do today. But this isn't about me. It's about the Lord. What he says, I'm going to do. Hopefully this will be a, uh, a comfort and encouragement to some of you brethren. I, there's, You know, again, brethren, a lot of you... A lot of our brethren want to give up and quit. No, if, uh, if you've run with the horsemen, then they've wearied they right? <laughs> anyway, thank you so much for watching this if you do. Thank you for all you brethren who pray for us and uh, help us. We, we need all the prayers we can get. Getting scary, isn't it? Also, uh, there's a dear brother who recently, just as I found today, um, and many of the brethren don't know, they're like, Lord, what will you have me to do? Keep those brethren in prayer who, um, who are unsure what the Lord will have them to do. And may the Lord reveal his will unto those brethren. Who seeks specifically, Lord, what, what do you want me to do? That's going to be it. Going to get this one uploaded. Thank you for watching if you do. We love you. We'll see you in the next video.